Now, I was in an all-volunteer unit flying over North Vietnam as scouts now. We use fighters for scouts and we would find targets for the fighter planes coming in. We had 120 fighters come in today in a number of missions and we knocked out a bunch of targets. But it was hard to see those targets from the altitude they came in at, at 15,000 feet with the heavy bomb load up. Hard to see the targets. So, and they didn't have much fuel to get down low because with the heavy bombs on, when you got down low, it just burned so much fuel in a jet fighter, it's unbelievable. So what we did was, was we sent fighters up there with just marking rockets on the wings that had their own tankers so we could refuel twice in Laos and we could go down on the ground and we could find, fly low and find the target. So this was a MISTI unit and uh, I was a MISTI, uh, what we call the fast fax or fast forward air controllers and we would go into North Vietnam and find these targets. So uh, some of the best information we got was from very brave men of the U.S. Army Special Forces that were always in the enemy country in North Vietnam and they were walking through the jungles and so on and they would find these big ammo parks and truck parks that were hidden under the jungle. They were on the ground. They were in the enemy country. There was two man teams. There was about 32 man teams up there and they found spectacular targets. And as soon as they transmitted the location, the coordinates on the phone, on the radio rather, they had to move because the enemy triangulation would know exactly where they transmitted from. And the patrols would come in from all directions to try to catch them. And they'd have to elude those patrols and then go to some other area and look for other targets. This particular morning at 2 o'clock in the morning, one of these teams called up and said they had a nice ammo park, a truck park. This was in uh, November of 1967. This was just before the Tet Offensive of 1968 when they had a big buildup and they launched a major attack in January and February of 1968. So they were building up all their arms and equipment, including tanks, trucks, ammunition, fuel, and so on. And this was one of the big supply dumps for this attack that they were building up that these Special Forces guys found. So we got the call at 2 in the morning. At 4 o'clock in the morning, we were briefed on. And we took off at, say, 5, 5.30, so that we could be over this target right at dawn. And at dawn, we came in off the coast at 550 miles an hour, right on the deck. And we came to these map coordinates to try to see this target, and we couldn't see a thing. So it was too dark, the sun wasn't up enough. We came through the mountains, came back around at a different angle across the target, still couldn't see it. Made about 10 passes. All the devils breaking loose on the ground. Tremendous anti-aircraft time because we kept coming across the same coordinates. But we had to do that. Finally, the sun got up high enough and I could, when I came in from the west, I saw the sun reflect all off these trucks and ammo and fuel and everything. It was the greatest target I've ever seen. I was just ecstatic. We had a beautiful, beautiful fight here. So at any rate, I called the control ship in Laos. I told them we needed all fighters diverted to this location. Uh, we had top priority on all fighters coming into North Vietnam. They'd send everybody to us if we asked for them because we found such good targets. So at any rate, and I said, uh, can you scramble gunfighter fly to four F-4s that are always holding on the end of the runway, five minute alert, pilots in the plane. So they scramble gunfighter from Da Nang and they're the closest ones to us and they're coming up the coast now and we go back and hit a tanker and top off on our tanker. We have our own personal tanker. We topped off and we came back into uh, North Vietnam, came from the west on a deck at about 700 knots, one more look at the target and started climbing up over Dong Hoi and off the, the coast now, these four F-4s are coming, along with all kinds of other flights, but the F-4s are the first. And I pick them up high and tell them that, you know, I'm down there, you know, two o'clock low or whatever, and we'll take them in. So we turn and we go back across this town of uh, Dong Hoi, which is a large town in North Vietnam. And the fire from the ground is like uh, stars in the sky, all the muzzle flashes. You know, there's 180,000 anti-aircraft cannons in North Vietnam tremendous fire when you're flying up there. So at any rate, as we were going over that city with the uh, fighters above us about 10,000 feet, we're, we climbed up to about 5,000 feet over this city and we're constantly turning and going up and down or else you get hit right away. You're always uh, 
doing an evasive action to keep out of, from being hit. At any rate, but we took a hit anyway. And as we took a hit, uh, it slammed around the plane pretty bad. Charlie Neal was flying the plane. I was in the back seat. Uh, we'd switch off every other mission, and this time I was in the back seat. Uh, Charlie says, what is that guy? Do you know what it is? And I says, no, it could be air conditioning recycling. You know, it might be. And about that time, you hear, you see fire and overheat, main fire, main overheat on your engines. A jet fighter is just a big jet engine, and it has wings and fuel on it and weapon systems on it. It's got two pilots strapped on the engine. This engine was a 16,000 horsepower engine. It's a jet engine with turbines. 